Good morning, everyone. So my name is Georg Greve. I've been in the open community for about 25 years, give or take. Um, and I've always tried to find the most interesting and biggest and most useful projects to tackle, um, which is why uh, I thought, why not go for the 4 billion people? Um, you will never heard, have heard of the rain so far because we're just coming out of hiding, so you're one of the first audience to actually hear what it is we've been working on, and I'm very excited to, to tell you about it. The alternative title for this presentation would have been How I Wasted Years of My Life by Signing an Encrypting Email and Then Losing the Key for It, and What Happened Next. Um, you see, I'm, I mean, so ultimately, I am actually passionate about email. Email is fascinating. It is the world's largest communication protocol. I mean, it has 3.7 billion users. Virtually everyone has an email address that makes it far larger than Facebook or, or any you know, of the social media messenger platforms. And it's the only of these protocols that is actually working in a decentralized, federated way that is not single vendor dependent. Um, to me, that, make, that makes email incredibly valuable. I mean, email drives business every day and is what really is the lifeblood for quite a few people. However, um, we all know that email also has certain challenges, um, primarily because things like privacy, identity, security, they were not top priorities when email was first designed. Right? People were happy that it worked in the first place. And, and many of the challenges that we have today, people didn't think of them back then. It wasn't their fault, they just couldn't for see that far, because frankly, who could see that the world would change like this? So email is also now today the number one channel for cyber attacks, malware, spam, scam, we all know this, right? Identity, impersonation, business email compromise, all these things um, exist and are a real challenge, which is actually why I started signing and encrypting my emails way back when. Um, I, I once held one of the top 50 GNU PG keys in the world, um, so I'm an early adopter. Um, for these reasons, but um, then I also, as an early adopter, found out what are the challenges. Um, because apparently, such a system was not good enough to use, even for myself, with a background as a software developer and physicist. I mean, if I can't use this, right, how can I expect four billion people to use it? So, I, I was thinking, I and mean, th this is really what drove me, like, why can't we have a way to protect our privacy, our identity? Why right? can't we own our identity online and, and control our user data? Um, and, you know, how, why can't we have that? And, you know, how hard could it be to get something that would be seamless and easy to use and well integrated and, and ultimately give us exactly what we want in a way that is usable for those four billion people? And of course, um, the problem is that when you're a technologist, the question, how hard can it be, is dangerous. Um, because you actually start thinking about the solution. Now, when you want authenticity for something like email and online, you need identity. And the hardest problem to solve in encryption is actually key management. Um, that, that is really the hardest one to crack. So, we were looking at what is out there and found that most systems are very centralized, they're built for corporate infrastructures, centrally managed, they're not really made for a decentralized, federated world. Which is, you know, why we said, all right, how do we solve this? And we found that actually this is one of the cases where we believe blockchain can actually make a difference. It, 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 that's one of the actual use cases we saw for it. So, well, we started building it. And in fact, by now, we have a prototype that we are about to introduce to the world um, where we can show how to build self-governed, democratically run, user-controlled networks where people own their data, own their identity in a way that seamlessly integrates with email as an application layer. And because we want to make this available to the largest number of people, 
we started with the largest email provider in the world, which is Gmail. So the first thing we do is provide this in a Gmail plugin, which makes it seamless to use for people using Gmail. We also integrate this right now with the help of Collabora, one of our partners, into LibreOffice. So it'll ship with LibreOffice in one of the next releases then, probably actually the next one. And um, we're doing this for Roundcube because Roundcube is the world's most popular open source webmail platform and it is used by many privacy-aware sites. And in fact, my previous company wrote it, so um, I, I, have a, I have a thing for it. But really, what we have built as a result, in the end, is like a service layer. Um, a service that allows us to seamlessly add verified user-controlled identity to virtually any application and any service out there, and which is why we're calling it Two Rain from Verified and Sovereign, and it protects our privacy. It allows us, as a kind of decentralized PKI, to add those capabilities anywhere. And I'll be very happy to, to everyone who wants to know how we're doing this to, to give you an idea. That I don't have the time now, but pick me up later. I'm here. I'd be ha I mean, there's nothing that I'd rather be talking about, to be honest. So what we're doing now and why we're here is a very simple. I mean, I wanted this from the beginning to be 100% open stack. Only what is open is trustworthy for me. Um, and therefore, I said, all right, we need to have this on, a, on an open hardware platform, open software platform, and our entire solution stack as well is 100% open. Everything is open source according to the open source definition or free software according to the Free Software Foundation definition. And what we want to achieve is we want to build an ecosystem a standard that people can build upon where they can integrate things that actually work with this, make use of this, because the more people are participating in this, the more value the ecosystem has, but also the more users will have control of their data and identity, which is ultimately what I want. Um, therefore, we are here to start building an ecosystem, and we use open power because we need for a trustworthy identity, a trustworthy platform. And to us, Open Power is by far the best fit of all the platforms out there. And so you'll, you'll see the demonstrator coming out now in, in Q4. Um, and we are right now actually securing the, the, the funds to go live for Q1 next year. So by the end of Q1, I would say, you should be able to use this in production. That's the plan. Give, give or take, but you know. Let's keep fingers crossed, but it looks good. And thank you very much. Pick me up if you have questions.